Okay, so over the next few minutes, I want to cover a little bit of theory with you guys before we dive deep into the code and gain a really good understanding of how to design a wonderful page object. Some advantages of the page objects are, and the main one being, is that it provides a layer of abstraction for us. It encapsulates the HTML page inside of our class so that our tests don't directly talk to the HTML page. Rather, our tests talk to the HTML page through the page object abstraction that we have created. That is the main beauty of the page object and why it makes the code so maintainable. Furthermore, it is just a logical layout of how our code should be structured right you have a page an html page that is represented in a page class and if you want to interact with that page some way the html page in some way you just utilize your page class to interact with that page furthermore as you guys are going to see in a few minutes it makes your tests so readable so readable that almost anybody can understand it as long as your method naming conventions are well formulated, your tests are going to be readable, just like an amazing novel. The final benefit of a page object pattern is that it follows good design principles. And that's the other advantage that it has over any kind of automated functional testing design for tests. Some of the main design principles that it follows is the dry principle that tells us to don't repeat yourself. The problem with the keyword driven framework was that it was not dry. Everywhere that you looked, you could see repetition. And so therefore it was wet, not dry at all. We wrote everything twice. A wise man once said the duplication is the primary enemy of a well-designed system. And what does that mean for us as QA engineers? It means that if we want to have maintainable tests that are resilient, that nobody claims that they are brittle, then those tests should not have any duplication. Now, the page object pattern does have some disadvantages. As everything in software development, nothing is usually black and white. A lot of stuff has some positives and has some negatives. Some of the negatives of the page object pattern are that it has an increased barrier to entry. Yes, you can't just dive right in and be able to write classes and methods and be able to structure everything very well to get a good page object pattern going. So it does have an increased barrier to entry where you need to learn a little bit before you can actually start doing it. The other biggest problem that I keep running into is that there are many different options because a lot of it involves actual development. There are many different paths that you can take to come to the same solution. And I've read probably at least 20 to 30 different solutions on page object patterns, utilizing many different ways. And all of them have benefits and negatives. And so sometimes it can kind of just twirl your head around in a whirlwind while you try to figure out what is the best way to implement something. The final disadvantage of the page object pattern, and in my opinion, it's not really a disadvantage, but for some of you it may be, is that it requires constant improvement. Because you are actually doing a lot of development work, you do need to constantly improve your automation framework and your page object pattern so that you remove the duplication and you remove all of the possible sources where a change can break your automated functional test. You always need to be on top of that. And I'm always on top of that still every day. I'm learning something new that can improve my page object pattern to be that much better. All right. So with all of that theory in place, let's go ahead and dive into the code so that we can better understand how to utilize the page object pattern and what it really is.